<laughs> Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Uh, today I'm doing a project that is going to be a lot of fun. It's perfect for beginners. It is called, uh, I'm calling it Abstract Drip Landscape. Um, you can leave off the drip part. I'm going to put that in at the end. So I'll show you how to do kind of the landscape um, normal, and then we'll add a few like drip elements in at the end. So um, if you don't like that, um, you can leave it out. I've got my husband Mark with me today. Hello. Hello. And we are doing this live. So if you're not catching it at 2 p.m. Central on Saturday, you're watching the live show. But thank you for watching both live and recorded. We really appreciate you being here with us today and watching this. If you haven't seen my pro, uh, my show before or you haven't um, checked out my channel before, um, if you click on my either my name in the bottom corner of the video or my picture off to the side there, you can go to my channel and see the other videos that I have and be sure to subscribe because um, I do a live show every Saturday for acrylic painting. Um, most of them are for beginners. Sometimes I do a little bit more difficult projects uh, for those who have painted for a little while, but uh, most of the ones that I do on Saturdays are for beginners. Just because the uh, more difficult projects uh, usually take two or three hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> although last week's project did take two hours. <laughs> so, didn't intend for it to take that long, but it did. This one should be a fairly short pro project. So, it should be um, a great first time painting. It's super easy, um, a lot of fun because you can kind of play with the colors. I have quite a big uh, color palette today. But um, you can adjust this, however, to whatever colors you already have. Um, you can add a few colors. I've added a couple of colors that I haven't used in other videos yet. Um, one's called Green Gold. And the other one, well, I actually used this a couple weeks ago. It was called Anthraquinone Blue, I think. Um, it's also sometimes called Indigo Blue. Um, but I really like it. I used it in my nautical uh, painting a couple of weeks ago. And for the background, and I really liked it. It's like a true navy blue. It's what these trees are done out of. Um, so it's it kind of doesn't skew green or uh, red. Like uh, ultramarine blue here is is a little bit more on the purple red side. Um, this one's kind of like right down the middle. Um, Thalo blue is kind of more on the green side. So um, I'm really liking it. So if you haven't got that color already, I would definitely recommend it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I got it because I had it in the Golden Flow acrylics. Um, so I decided to go ahead and use it for my trees because I wanted to do this drip technique. Now, if you don't have the um, Flow acrylics that I'm going to be using today, you can just add a little bit of water to your paints and you can get that kind of fluid um, feeling. They may not be as dark as mine because the water will kind of uh, make them a little bit less opaque but um, the brushes I'm using today are pretty pretty simple I've got like a large flat or filbert brush for the background and then like a, a smaller flat uh, or filbert for some of the more detailed clouds and things like that and then maybe a fan brush if you've got one stiff bristled is best um, a small liner brush for some of the smaller details and then um, either a Deerfoot stippler. This one is a quarter inch or a like a stiff bristled round brush. So either one works fine. Well, let's get started. How are we doing today, Mark? Chat. Doing well. Uh, everybody's coming in and saying hi to each other. Great. So far, no questions. They like the, the paint on your plate there. Looks pretty. I know, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I save all of my palettes. I, I I kind of imagine like um, one day doing a wall uh, treatment where I just uh, hung up all of my palettes from previous projects and like covered the entire wall with them. Wouldn't that be cool? Of course, I don't know, have any place in my house where I can do that, but I still think it would be really cool. So let me, I've got a 16 by 12 inch canvas. And uh, this is actually canvas panel, so it's kind of thin, but it's stiff. you can use whatever canvas or surface that you want um, and whatever size that you want. You can just adjust the sizes of the project to suit your needs. This could go on a really large canvas and look great, or even a little bitty canvas, either way. 
I'm going to spritz it a little bit with some water and I've just got a, like a regular clear water in a spray bottle and that just helps the surface of the canvas absorb the paint a little bit easier. And I'm going to start out by putting in my horizon line. Now it's going to be about a third of the way up the canvas so you can kind of measure if you want or just kind of figure it out with your finger here and I'm going to start with some light ultramarine blue. This is just ultramarine blue plus white but it's pre-mixed so I just like having it pre-mixed because I use this color quite a bit. It's great for shadows and for far away um, far away though I don't know what these are like mountains or whatever. It's a good like light shadow color. I'm trying to get this kind of straight across. That's good enough. We'll probably put in a little bit more colors on top of this, but this will just kind of give us a separation for our painting. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt umber and some unbleached titanium. If you don't have unbleached titanium, you can just use white. And I've made kind of a soft gray brown color and I'm going to use that underneath and I've got my filbert brush and I'm just kind of using the edge of it and going right up underneath that line there just to put in kind of a far away it's mixed in with that um, with this previous color the light ultramarine blue so it's kind of made it a little bit softer a little bit purpley color I'm gonna let's add a little bit of this yellow oxide to it start putting that in I'm not coming down very far with these I'm just kind of doing this in layers and I'm going to get darker as I go down toward the bottom of the canvas. So if it gets a little bit too, um, if it's too dark, you can add a little bit of your white to your color and kind of go back in and soften it up because you want these far away in landscapes. You want the areas that are farther away from you to be less saturated with color. That's why we're making it kind of a gray. And you want them to be lighter than your close-up colors so there we go those were a little it was just a little bit dark for me All right so I'm just adding a little bit of the lighter colors on top there now I'm gonna keep going grab a little bit more of this yellow ochre and I'm not cleaning out my brush so each time I get a new color it's kind of mixing a little bit with the color before it and that kind of helps with the blending look that we're going for here and I'm just kind of going back and forth over here. keeping my brush strokes kind of horizontal like that'll help with that illusion of depth too and as I get closer to me I'm going to make bigger um, lines so right now I'm making my lines pretty small and close together right and as I get down here toward the bottom I'm gonna make larger stripes and that will just help that illusion of depth. So as I get farther away, I'm going to make my uh, lines a little bit smaller um, and closer together. And that'll just, and it's the same with water or anything like that. It just kind of helps trick your eye into thinking it's farther away. Oh, still got the yellow ochre, yellow oxide, either one. They're both they're similar colors. Um, this is just our undercoat. We're going to put lots of other colors on top of this, but we're kind of just going to use this as our base. So then I'm going to grab this green gold. Now, if you don't have the green gold, of course, um, it's a new color. Um, you can mix this with um, like maybe a um, yellow ochre and um, a sap green or a more neutral green, um, a yellowish green. So it's just a kind of a golden 
well, it's green gold. gold. It's a golden green. So adding just like a little yellow ochre or something like that to your to another color um, will make it. I'm going to add a little bit of it up here too, just to kind of soften that up. I feel like it's, yeah, needed it. A little bit of touch of green just there. Now as I get down toward the bottom here, I'm going to start adding a little bit of this phthalo green color. I'm going to mix these two together so that there's not straight phthalo. Maybe even add just a touch of the unbleached titanium to soften it up a little bit. And we'll start making some bigger. Add a little bit of water to my brush. There we go. I'm kind of making it, um, funneling it down this way. So I'll have dark, sort of like a vignette if you think about that, you know, if you've ever used a, a filter um, for like on Instagram or whatever, that vignette one where um, it darkens the corners and edges, that's kind of what we're going for here. We're going to make the edges and corners a little bit darker than the middle area. So I'm just going to keep on going here. Just doing this side, side to side brush strokes. Trying to keep them kind of horizontal. If you do, if you do angle them, you can kind of angle them, um, make them look like they're little hills or something like that. That's fine too. And then as I get to these corners, I'm going to add a little bit more of that dark color to my brush and do the corners a little bit darker. Do the same thing over here. Okay. Now where these two meet, I'm going to add a little bit more of my yellow oxide to my brush. Get most of that green, darker green off. And add some yellow oxide and maybe pick up a little bit of this. The yellow oxide that I'm using is not opaque. It's a transparent color. So I need it to be a little bit more opaque. And I'm just going to go back over that transition area right there to blend it in. I think nice thing about acrylics is they blend or you know you can uh, go they layer very well that's what I'm trying to say so if you have a hard edge where it looks um, awkward just go back to the color that's just above it and blend that back down into it and you'll be fine and we're going to be doing like I said lots of different layers so it's fine if they are a little bit streaky that's good so even you can see, it's already kind of looking a little bit far away just by the way we put it in our colors. There, I'm going to clean that out really well. We'll start working on our sky. Okay, so I'm going to start out at the horizon line with some pink. And so I'm going to pick up my white here, straight white, and a little tiny bit of Quinacridone magenta, not a, not a lot. You don't need a lot for this. And I'm just going to go right up over the top of these little mountain shapes that I made here. Don't worry about if you go over the top. We're going to go ahead and put a second coat of paint on those, so it won't matter if you... Whoops, I got some water drops on there. Darn it. I'll fix that later. We will fix our mountains here. We're going to go ahead and, you know, give them a second coat, give them a little bit of highlights and stuff. So just do the best you can. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit sloppy. Nice thing about this abstract kind of painting techniques, it's great for beginners because it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to look like mine. You're, um, I, I was actually watching a ginger cook. If you haven't watched ginger cook, she's awesome. Um, she's, uh, does acrylic painting videos too. And, um, she's been painting way longer than I have. And I've been painting for almost 30 years now, so that says a lot. <laughs> and anyhow, she was talking about how, because um, she was doing kind of an impressionist style painting, a palette knife painting, and I was watching her. And she was talking about how, um, you know, every person's um, 
handwriting is different. And so it goes to figure that that, that would um, include painting too, because we're using our hands for it. And so because everybody's handwriting is different, everybody's painting style is going to be different as well. And I thought that was genius. That's such a good insight because I, you know, I always try to tell my, my students that you know, there it's okay if theirs doesn't look like mine. It's not going to look like mine because you're, you know, you've got a different um, way of holding your brush. You've got a different way of loading your brush. You know, you're it's going to be different. So, um, you know, make this your own and and just have fun with the process. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. This is um, cadmium yellow light. Um, let me just go through my palette because I didn't do that already. So I've got cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium orange, cadmium red medium. Quinacridone magenta. This one is called cobalt violet. Um, that's a new color as well. Um, this is ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue light, anthraquinone blue, burnt umber. This one is called light blue permanent. You can mix this with uh, phthalo blue and white. This one is teal. You can mix that with um, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and white. This is phthalo green. This is green gold, and that's our um, yellow oxide that we were using and this is unbleached titanium and titanium white so um, so I've got that pink color still on my brush and I'm just picking up some of my yellow light light yellow um, cadmium yellow light sorry and I'm gonna start in this middle and this middle area is gonna be kind of like uh, oh no no this oval shape right here is what I'm gonna create so I'm not going to bring my yellow out too far. It's going to kind of just stay in this general area because I want to do that vignette thing. Remember what we were talking about. So this other area up here is going to be darker around it. So I'm going to blend it over the top a little bit of my pink. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that pink color that I had. I don't want it to go too bright yet. I'm going to blend some of that back in bring that color up a little bit higher than I did there we go here again I'm kind of keeping my brush strokes horizontal there we go add a little bit of water to it I'm gonna grab my cadmium yellow medium now go over the top of that this might be more of a sunrise type painting than a sunset. It's kind of more of those kind of soft pink colors that happen in a sunrise. Okay, that's good. Let's grab a little bit of this cadmium orange. Every time I pick up a new color, I'm going to mix it just a little bit into what the color before it. And just That'll just help the oh, continuity of the painting, help it blend. How are you doing, honey? Oh, doing good. There's not a, no real questions. We had a like on your uh, nail polish, and ah yes, I kind of picked up like a sparkly sunset color. Yep, and, and there were lots of <laughs> comments about liking the colors and so forth. So yeah, I really like the colors in this one. This one's got some really cool stuff going on. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more water to my brush, and we're going to pick up some of the magenta now, mix that into our orange. Start going a little bit darker. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty. Let's go around the outside of this. A uh, question from uh, Mark Bergeron asking uh, what mm -hmm. brand of paints, uh, are they pro or basic? These are pro. These are the golden and um, Liquitex colors. But you could use basic for this too. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow on that. I feel like it's getting too red. I'm just going to go back over that with the yellow to kind of soften it up. Okay, that's good. Let's get some of this pink going on over here. Grab some white and make a little bit darker pink this time with the quinacridone magenta. Start at the bottom there and 
work it over the top and I'm working these colors in while they're wet so they're kind of blending a little bit. The middle colors are probably starting to dry by now. These bottom colors are definitely dry. I'm going to add a little bit more white to my brush and try to blend these two together. So by doing that I'm just going to grab a little bit more of the white, the light pink color that I started with and blend that back up. See how that kind of makes it blend in to what was going on up there. That's good. And I'm not really trying to do a circle. It looks kind of like a circle right now, but I'm just going to break that up because I don't want it to look like a circle necessarily. I'm kind of trying to make some cloud shapes in here in a minute. Okay, let's grab some of that darker color and do it off to the side over here. Darkening up our edges. If your paint is not flowing well, just add a little bit of water to it. Okay, so we want to transition here. I'm going to grab some of my yellow. Go back in with the yellow to transition that back in. And then with the white down here at the bottom. Just kind of blend all of that in. Having that lighter color on your horizon really helps with the, the um, illusion of depth. So we're just kind of trying to keep that the bottom area just a little bit more lighter. I think that's looking good. Add a few random brush strokes here and there just to get that paint off my brush. It's looking good. All right. Let's keep going. We're going to go with almost straight quinacridone magenta now. And we'll work that in up here. And your clouds are going to be the opposite of the horizon. So if you thought about, you know, that what's on the bottom is closer to you on in the horizon, on the top it's closer to you in the sky. So this part is closer to you and this part is closer to you. So all of this back here is going to be smaller and closer together. And then as we get up here to the top, we can do broader brush strokes and do larger ones. And that'll make them come forward at us. So we got a question asking if, uh, if you, do they need all the colors or can they just mix them? You can mix them. Yeah, totally mix them. I just did it because it's faster when I'm doing, you know, these kind of shows. Sometimes it's faster than having to mix them, stop and mix them. But yes, yes. Okay. Totally. And they want to know, can they use a filbert instead of a flat brush? Yeah, I'm actually using a filbert here. Yes. Yes. Wait a minute. No, sorry. They asked why a filbert instead of flat brush. <laughs> oh, because it kind of just rounds out the edges a little bit. And since we're doing clouds, I figured, you know, that they have kind of more rounded edges. So that's why I did it with the filbert. But really, you could use a flat brush too. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to start with this color. This is that darker pink. I'm going to start kind of coming back in here and doing some sort of cloud shapes. And I'm just going to kind of put in some lines sort of trailing in on our sunset, just some darker areas. And I'm just setting my brush down and sort of skimming it along to kind of create some random shapes. See how I didn't do like these lined up here. I kind of did one down, one above. Um, just kind of try to make these sort of random when you're placing them. We're good. We hit 102 viewers right now. Wonderful. This is great. That's awesome. Yeah, do a little finger dance. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to grab this um, violet color. If you don't have the violet, you could mix something similar with quinacridone magenta and ultramarine blue. 
and it might not be exactly the same kind of um, color, but it'd be close. It's any kind of a red violet color. And this is just a little bit more on the red side. It's even a purple plus the quinacridone would probably make something similar to this. And I'm going to use that at the top here. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. It feels like it's a little bit overpowering there. Let's just soften it up a little bit with some white. I want to leave just a little bit of room for some blue. I did want to get some of that ultramarine blue up there in the top of the sky, so I might just do that on top of this color. So this would work for any any sunset or sunrise type painting that you were doing. Even if you wanted to use a very limited color palette um, and just do like yellows and orange, say, you would just start out with your lightest color and work to dark. Um, and you could do uh, you could do this with whatever colors you have. I'm just trying to work in. This is just our base color. So we're just trying to really press down and work that color down into the fibers of the canvas. If you see any white areas peeking through, you can go back over those. We're just kind of trying to make sure that it all gets covered with paint. All the way to the top. There we go. All right, looks good. So we could stop there, honestly. It's kind of looking cool as it is. Um, let's add a few of the lighter colors um, into the clouds up here. So I'm going to grab some white and use it with that purple color and just add a few kind of – when I'm doing my clouds, I am I kind of like to do my clouds with flat bottoms. That's just my – um, preference. So these clouds up here are going to be larger than these ones that we did down here. So I'm going to do bigger, bigger sweeping shapes. But mainly I'm just kind of dabbing with my brush at the top and then brushing side to side at the bottom to kind of flatten out that and blend out that bottom edge. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Um, Made sense to you. <laughs> How long has it been since you've tried painting, honey? He, I used to, when we first started, we were dating, or no, when we first married too, I used to make him go out and do watercolors with me. But he doesn't. Yeah, I, I was a big talker when we were first married, and I said, well, anybody can paint that. So you took me out into the desert to do a watercolor painting, and mine looked like a kindergartner did it. And that's basically when I stopped painting and said, okay, <laughs> it's harder than it was. I wasn't teaching yet. I was still learning myself. So <laughs> if we did it again, I think I could help you a little bit better than I did then, hopefully. Okay, so, yeah, that's looking really good. I'm liking this. Let's go ahead and fix our little mistake here. So if you... If you are clumsy like me and you get water on your paint that's curing um, and it lifts like that. So I'm going to just fix it. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that burnt umber and white and the light blue and just go right back over it. This was dry now, so it just covered up just fine. See that? No problem. Let's get this spot here too. Oh, I got two spots there. Okay. It's looking really good. All right, now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush just to give me a little bit more control over what I'm doing here. I've got a quarter inch. Oh, look at I did it again. Darn it. I swear, I'm the clumsiest painter ever. I think, I was telling Mark the other day, I feel like I'm like the Julia Childs. Not that I'm that, you know, popular as she, but I'm like the Julia Childs of paintings because she was always like, you know, dropping things and, and doing crazy stuff. So that's kind of how I feel like I'm just not all that coordinated. That is the reason why I didn't go into dance. Just saying. 
Okay. I'm going to leave that spot. We'll mess with it later if we need to. I really like how it looks right now. Like I said, I mean, you can honestly stop and um, just work on this foreground and let that sky um, be what it is. I'm going to go ahead and work on this now. I think this is pretty much dry. Um, you don't want to work on your paint when it's curing or when it's um, still a little bit tacky. Once it starts drying, it gets a little tacky and it'll lift off the canvas if you mess with it. But I think this has been enough time here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this yellow. This is the cadmium yellow light. I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow oxide to it to desaturate the color. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of it in my distance, just like that. I'm just, let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm just going to add, well, not too much. I want to keep these brush strokes very thin and horizontal like. Just adding a little bit of light, like some light is hitting on them. If you were doing water, you could concentrate the light area right in the middle here. Make it look like it was shining on the water. I have a sunset painting um, on water in one of my other tutorials. That The sky is not quite this complicated. It's more of a simplified, but it was the same. Everybody was liking the, the painting with the, as it was. and. They're like, oh no, gonna mess it up with trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're doing trees. We're doing trees. We're doing drips. We're gonna, we're gonna go crazy with it. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna grab some teal. And teal. I want my the teal to be kind of the dominant color in the foreground here. So I'm gonna really start um, adding it in in little dabs and leaving a little bit of space but I'm kind of going to slope it in like this so it might come up high up here but then I'm not going to do it all the way up to the top here and I'm going to kind of create little pockets of color that sort of point your eye down in this direction if that makes sense so at the bottom here, I'm going to do larger, flatter, thicker lines. But I'm not going all the way to my corner. And see how having that darker color underneath really helps now. It's kind of giving a little bit of depth. to the middle. We'll work our way this way. Keeping the lines up closer up on the horizon, very thin. And these ones down there can be thicker. go. Add a few dents up in here, just a few little lines. Very good. Let's add some white to that. We'll put a few little highlighted areas too. This don't want it to look like water though, so we don't want too <laughs> too light. Yeah, but I'm grab some of this green gold and mix it in and see what that does. But the techniques, what? you know that you're teaching here, you know, would work good, like with that, the uh, sky over water or... Uh, oh, absolutely. Yep. Really would. 
Oh, that's pretty. That's green gold mixed with that light teal color. Go ahead and kind of clean up our mountains too now that we've got everything else in there. Let's grab this color. This is the light blue permanent. And you can mix this with phthalo blue and white. If you don't have it pre-mixed, it's just kind of a light blue. I'm going to use that, I think, at the top, just at the top of my mountains to kind of shape them out a little bit. And these are very random shapes, so just kind of up and down, nothing too... Perfect. I don't need my lines to be perfect. Just kind of trying to shape them out if they got a little messy or you got over the top of some of them with your horizon or your uh, light pink color. Just dabbing a little bit of color in at the top and then kind of just lightly blending it out at the bottom just by doing some diagonal brush strokes. Dab and blend. That's good enough. Let's add a little bit of this color down here, just a tiny bit. It's actually kind of close to that uh, teal with white color, too, that I did. All right, let me zoom out. Looking good. Let's grab my scrubby brush here. This is my Deerfoot stippler. I'm gonna use it to spray my canvas palette here. Let's get a little bit dry. And let's add a little bit of blue up into our sky. I feel like it needs some blue. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue because it's just a nice purpley blue. The purple will kind of make it look a little bit farther away. And I'm just going to scrub it in at the top corners here. You could use a light wash if you didn't want to use your deer foot. Just want some really nice dark colors. I'm going to come up underneath my clouds even a little bit. You don't really use water with this technique, so this is definitely a dry brush. And I'm just going to do some random horizontal lines here towards the top. You can come up underneath some of these clouds, give them a little bit darker. Good. I don't want to come down too far. I'm just kind of darkening up that upper area there. Let's do some white now. It's awfully bright. Add some of that violet to it to soften it up. There we go. So we're going to start shaping out some clouds. And when you load this brush, if you do the tip a little bit um, thicker with paint, then you can kind of get some cloud shapes just by tapping that thicker paint up toward the top and then brushing it out. Those are nice. Actually, some of that color is going to be underneath because it's the light's hitting it underneath. So we want to be sure to put some lighter color underneath. 
Nice. Okay, let's go ahead and do the pink now. We're going to do the same thing. We'll grab a little bit of the lighter color. Just a shade lighter than what we did on these ones. And we're just going to add some of that in on the underside of these clouds here. See how that just kind of blends them in, really makes them, gives them some shape. I'm not getting too detailed with this though because we want to keep it sort of abstracty, sort of random. So. Pretty. As we get closer to the center here, I can add a little bit more white. And just kind of going back over what I already put in there and adding a little bit lighter highlights to it. That's all I'm doing. Kind of reimagining where the light might be hitting the clouds and might just kind of do a few random brush strokes right in the middle there. Just trying to keep my shapes from getting too much in a pattern. You don't you kind of want to avoid patterns in nature. Um, so you just want to kind of keep don't make any one cloud the same as the next one. You're being awfully quiet today, Hem. How's it going? Oh, well, there's no uh, big questions. It's just you know, uh, just a lot of uh, compliments on the colors and loving the colors and good. Looking forward to painting it. Awesome. Oh, there's a question. Uh, what brush did you use for the clouds? <laughs> These, this is a Deerfoot stippler. It's it's a little bit. Uh, it's a stiff bristled brush and it's angled, so there's a. Um, wow, well, it's, it's not looking. Very, this is a bigger one, you can see. It's got an angle to the bristles, and it's kind of a stiff bristled brush. They can be kind of hard to find, and they were a decorative painting brush. You could use a stencil brush, though, if you don't have this, and you can cut them um, at an angle if you want it to be angled. Um, this is just one of my long time, I've used these for a long time in decorative painting, and so I've kind of just adapted them to my fine art paintings as well. Um, and I'm kind of using the tip facing down and just sort of drawing with it. This is where you could use this brush instead. Like if you have a, a stiff bristle, these are a lot easier to find is these little stiff bristle brushes. And I can do the same exact thing with this. Just um, I just find that the having the little bit of a um, angle gives me a little bit more control. But you know, you can get the same type of effects with this these uh, hog hair bristle brushes. Okay, looking really good. I really like this. Okay, so we could stop here. Um, I might add a little bit more yellow to my clouds. Let's grab a little bit of yellow here and add some yellow to the undersides of some of these clouds, just like they're catching a little bit of that yellow color. Just very lightly. I'm not really pressing down very hard. Just very lightly dragging and dropping in some color in there. It's pretty. That yellow really makes it pop. This is the yellow, um, uh, which one was this? Yellow, cadmium yellow light. Okay, let's add some down here too. All right. I almost hate to do drips on this. It's so pretty. <laughs> oh, trust me. There are a lot of people are kind of dreading the drips coming. But, oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> but, you know, of course, they can stop at any time they want to. They That's right. To That's on, right. So. <laughs> you don't have to do the drips. Okay, let's just do, we'll do fewer drips than I did on my other one. I feel like I want some drips, but 
will do. You won't do go crazy with it. So I've got my fluid acrylics out here. These are these are actually high flow acrylics, so they're even a little bit one step more fluid than the. They're almost like an acrylic ink. So if you have acrylic inks, you could use this for that. I'm going to find some of my darkest areas here. Let's mix a little bit of white into that pink so it's not quite so overpowering. Let's do that. All right, let's see what this does. It might I might not have put enough in there. So once I get my color in, what I what I found was easiest to do is to add a little bit of water. And I'm using my liner brush because this way I can kind of control where these drips happen. And if I pull it down just a little bit, it I can get a little bit smaller line. We won't do that many. To, For some reason, it's angling yes, this way. Yes, we need to remember to be very quiet while the drips are happening. <laughs> are we having a moment of silence for the sky? Yes, and we don't want to scare the drips. <laughs> I'm going to blot them a little bit because I feel like they got a little bit too far down. There we go. That's good. Don't want to scare the drips. You're a mess. Let's add some yellow drips. We'll do some yellow ones right in here. This one's hands of yellow. I didn't have a cadmium yellow, but hands of yellow and cadmium yellow medium are very similar colors. So they you pull down where I want my drips to go so that they know where to be. And I'm going to let them, oh, there we go. That one did good. Make sure I kind of, if I angle my canvas one way or another, it'll kind of change the direction of them a little bit. There we go, that's nice. Add a little bit of yellow to that one, see what happens. So they're wondering, is there any other way to do the drips? If you could use a straw or something like that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Straw would be great. Straw would make it kind of spread out a little bit. Um, I dab off the end there. Just a little bit. You can control them a little bit. I um, I would, I mean, this is still, this is pretty dry, so I wouldn't do the drips until your background is dry, and that way if you do have a runaway one that is just kind of looking way too menacing or, you know, taking over your canvas, you can just wipe it off um, without, if you, if you had your background um, still wet, it would take off your background, you know. Color, so you wouldn't want that to happen. So you don't want it to look like a crime scene? <laughs> no. Pretty much not, no. But I really found that using the liner brush helps keep the drips a little bit thinner. So, because um, otherwise they were really thick. Um, whoops, like that. I don't know that I like that. Yeah, and I can flick some color on there too. Okay, good, good enough. Like, we don't want to kill it with the drips. Let's put some of them up here on this side. And I'll add some yellow to some of them. Ooh. Use that liner brush that's wet to just kind of pull down where I want these drips to happen. And then turn it on its end here. Add a little 
bit of water right at the tip where you want it to flow. Come on. Sometimes you have to give them a nudge to get them, get them going. more series. Let's do some of these teal colored drips up here. Just underneath some of these clouds. And I'll add some white too. That one's going to go. It is kind of quiet. I'm like concentrating. I'm being very it's almost like watching paint too bright. Right. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> You're a mess. All right. I don't like that. I'm just going to wipe that off. Okay. Good enough. My line of brush go. There it is. Just concentrating really hard on what I'm doing here. I could always tell when I'm doing my kids' classes when it got really quiet that they were into it. Like they were really concentrating when it got quiet. I don't know. The drips just kind of make it a little bit more interesting, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I'm, they're kind of a trend right now in uh, painting. You see them, the dripping, drip thing everywhere. So I just thought we'd add a little bit for fun. All right. So that's good. That's that. Let's add a little bit of, I'm going to go back to my quarter inch round. Let's add the drips on our where we want our trees to be. So I want my three trees to be kind of off center here and about like that big. So I want the tree trunks to start about halfway in this section of green. So kind of split that down the middle and pick three spots. Maybe your middle one is going to be right smack dab in the middle of your canvas. So one here. Go a little farther away, and one here, and then one here, right? And I'm just going to turn it this way and let those tree trunks happen with drips. And here again, using the liner brush can help you get a little bit smaller drips out of it. Add a little bit more water so that it keeps flowing. You can add a little bit more ink too if you need to. Come on. I'm just trying to. This kind of gives it a look a little bit more, I don't know. Oops, that one got really big, didn't it? It's all right. There we go. It catches on the canvas texture, and so it gives the the line a little bit more um, interest. It's a little bit more jaggedy and random. Now you could use my credit card technique for this and make your tree trunks with a credit card and that would be cool too. If you've done any of those. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to let that keep going. 
and it's fine if these get really tall because your tree is going to cover up this whole area. So you, I'd rather have them bigger than, or too big than not big enough. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, cool. Very different. All right, so let's grab my, now this is where if you want to make these like a little bit more um, natural tree shaped, you could use your um, deer foot and stipple in the edges to make them a little bit more like fluffy, right? You could use your speed sea sponge to do the same thing to kind of fluff them out a little bit. I used my brush this time because I wanted them to be a little bit more like angular. Um, it just felt like it fit the scene a little bit better. So I'm using this anthraquinone blue indigo. Add a little bit of water to it. It's getting a little dry. I'm going to spray my canvas or my palette again one more time. If you, um, if your paints are drying out uh, on you like this, if you put out a bunch of paints and they're starting to dry and, and you're, um, if you don't keep them hydrated, what will happen is that the top layer will start to dry on you and you'll get kind of a hard um, crust on them and then there'll be wet paint underneath. So you, you sometimes you'll have to kind of flip up that uh, harder crust and even spraying them won't really rehydrate your paints uh, because that crust is sort of uh, hardening and it's not going to absorb the water. But what I found it helps is if that's happening, you can um, spray it down really good and then put it in your plastic bag and let it set for about a half hour or so. And when you pull your paints back out, they'll have absorbed some of that moisture that the humidity in the little in the bag will um, make it make them absorb. So. Um, it's kind of a way to force that water down into that and you can keep working, especially in like uh, very dry climates. That's a really helpful thing to do. Okay, so I'm just going to shape my trees. Now we can do them really tall. We can do them whatever shape we want. I'm going to kind of do oval shapes, I think. So, um, and I'm just dabbing dots with my brush. And setting it down and pulling a little bit as I lift. Leave a little bit of color showing through here and there too. Good, that's it. Tree, done. Okay, so we've hit 101 likes. So everybody awesome. would like to see Stick Man, but Stick I think man. today's version is Drip Man, maybe? Drip Man, okay. Does he need some drips? Let's give him some drips. Where should we drip him? Should we do a little cloud over here? Let's do a little drippy cloud for him. Grab some of this blue here. Ooh, this is going to be dark. I oh, know, stick man. Let's give him some teal color in there too. To, oh, let's do some white. We'll do some drips. Man's getting a, he's getting a drippy cloud. If anybody was to see this, they would be like, what the heck is that? It's so ugly and random, but you know, hey, you got to, this is our painting yeah. journey right you here. You got to give the people got, what they want. We got the flag from the 4th of July. I think that's when we, no, we did that. We started it with the boho flowers because that's how he got his crown. And then he got the bird last week when we did our birds. He got some more flowers. He got, and the, sea he got the scarf from he France. Got yeah, he got the starfish from the sea creatures one. All right, we got his drippy clouds. He's good. <laughs> so oh my goodness. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm coming down. Um, 
I don't know, about, about an inch underneath my horizon line on, with my tree here. And I'm not really going to have them touching necessarily. So I'm going to keep them kind of narrow. Well, these two are going to touch a little bit, I think. I got these tree trunks a little close together. But I can keep them a little bit. These are sort of fantasy. This is a fantasy landscape, I would say. You know, this is very, very abstract. It's not on the realistic side like some of my other ones have been. So, But you could make it more realistic, like I said, with the... You could make your trees green or, you know, red or whatever color you wanted to. And make them a little bit more. So we just fun. had CM join us from New Zealand. It's tomorrow there. Wow. <laughs> Good morning. Mm, I wish that I'd done this one a little bit farther away. I feel like they're kind of encroaching on each other a little bit too much, but. That's the joy of doing this live, right? Okay, so I'm kind of, that's good. I think these are very, and then now I'm going to go in and kind of, oh, make them a little bit more, I think I want a branch coming off this way, so I'm just going to kind of, pretend like there was one coming off like that and make sure that my edges have some random dots coming off the sides so that it doesn't look like a perfect oval so I'm just going to kind of do some little dabs I have a question uh, did you have any guidance or inspiration for your color selection um, yeah, I actually kind of just went on um, Pinterest and looked at different artworks, and I tend to pin a bunch of stuff that um, that I like, and then what I'll do is go back in and look and see if there's a commonality to any of the color schemes, and this violet color was one of the ones that I noticed was in a lot of the ones that I had pinned. Um, a lot of the paintings that I'd pinned and then this teal color as well. So the violet and teal and then I kind of built around that. So and then this dark blue trees was another one that I had seen several times that I really liked the idea of the dark blue trees. So um, I decided to go ahead and do them. Yeah, I really kind of wish I'm looking at it on the screen here. I kind of wish that these were uh, separated a little bit, but they're, you know, the, they are what they are. So you can make yours a little bit farther apart. I'm going to grab some white and mix in some white to that uh, indigo blue there. And I'm going to just put some white dabs in. Keep these very spaced apart. And I kind of just did them off to the, to the one side here so that maybe this is the darker side since the sun's coming from this side. Honestly, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of highlight on this back side of the trees because, you know, the light's coming from over here, but we're we're going to do it because we feel like it. I felt like it needed a little bit of a shape. So All right. Just to give it a little bit of color in the middle there. But you could do these in solid silhouette too, it would be pretty. All right, now I'm going to grab some teal. Do the same thing with the teal, just a few random dabs, some longer than others. I feel like the faster that you do this, the more kind of random it looks and the better it looks. So don't overthink it too much, you know, when you're doing it, just kind of have fun with it and. Um, Stop every now and then to kind of check yourself because you can get a little bit over happy with the colors and end up with a teal, te teal tree. Um, so, you know, check yourself every now and then just kind of see, stop. But when you're doing it, I feel like it's it's happens uh, a little bit more naturally if you just kind of go fast and don't overthink it too much. So I think I like that. I really like the look at those. They're very kind of weird and they fit our landscape. What brush are you using now? 
this is the quarter inch flat. This is a, a flat, uh, I think it would probably be called a shader. The chiseled would be shorter, So, but you could use either one. Now I'm going to put in um, our shadow for our trees. And I've used a little bit of the phthalo green with this color. So I've already got the teal color in my brush um, with the with that dark blue. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that dark blue. And I'm just mixing it with the phthalo green, which was kind of some of our background color, right? Um, and I'm just going to lightly, I think I'm going to do them a little bit like they're kind of casting a shadow slightly off center. So I'm going to kind of dab in this direction. I'm not doing the tree trunk, um, but you can if you want to. I'm just kind of doing sort of similar shape as the middle of our tree there. Just dots. Let, let some of the background color show through. It doesn't have to be solid. Add a little teal to it to soften it up. Just starting right where the tree trunk ends, maybe just slightly above it. And honestly, there'd probably be a little bit of a shadow from the tree trunk if we were going to get technical about it, but we're not. This is our fantasy landscape. So we do what we want. Good. Good. I like it. Um, all right. So now it's just kind of a little matter of adding a few accents. So I added some red, splotches of red in my um, landscape. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this color from our shadow over here. Just a few little spots just to kind of, I don't know, unify it. Um, on. There we go. And let's go ahead and use it up here just very, very sparingly. Maybe go up underneath some of our things that we've already done just to kind of add a little bit like maybe there's a shadow on some of this stuff very few of these keeping my brush horizontal so that it's making very thin lines okay good now I'm gonna grab some clean that out let's add some of the pink. We need some pink down here. This is the violet color. Cobalt violet. I'm just going to add some of that into my corners, just dabbing it horizontally. You could use your Deerfoot stippler if you wanted to get more random. You could use your, your um, I'll show you this, you can use this and kind of make some, you know, shapes or something like that but I'm not gonna get too detailed I think I want to keep it with the brush I think I'm wanting to add a few like dabs of that's too dark let's grab some of my teal and go back in there with my teal Whoops. how are you doing honey okay. I can hear you typing well I'm just thanking the other people in the chat to help answer some of the questions that I have no clue to so, oh. <laughs> like what? Oh, just about you know, just commenting on the uh, the paints, like the was it the high flow that you're using, and if right, you didn't, right, if you did not have access to those, uh, could you know what could you do with the net and so forth? Oh, right. Yeah, you could just add water to your um, heavy body, or you could even if you have a, a airbrush medium or a flow medium of some sort, you could add that to your paint too. Um, 
So I'm going to add some of this color. And I just realized that when I did mine, when I did my example, I put that violet color down in the corner when I was painting in my foreground. I forgot to do that today. So we could just add a little bit of it in down here. Now that it's in. I don't feel like I need too much of it though. <clears throat> okay, then I'm going to grab some red and I'm literally just dabbing on just kind of like what we did with our brush, our, our trees. Just dabbing on a few random shapes there with my red. Then I might take it and put a few on this side, but the ones that are higher up are going to be smaller dabs and the ones closer are going to be bigger. And I'm just kind of changing the direction of my brush. Sometimes I'm putting it on the angle. And it'll give me kind of like a little triangular shape. Sometimes I'm doing it flat and it'll give me more of a square shape. So just keep it random. Maybe put a few little ones in the middle of our trees there. That's good. I'm not trying to make create like flower shapes or anything like that. I'm just kind of trying to do some random interesting things, maybe indicate that there's some sort of flowers there, but not get too specific with it. Let's grab some of our cadmium yellow medium, and I'm going to put a few dabs of that in. Keep them small at the top, a little bit bigger at the bottom here. Not too many of those. Then grab some of the orange cadmium orange and just a few of those too. Keeping my brush kind of at an angle here. Uh, that's good. All right, let's do some pink ones with quinacridone magenta and some white. light pink. Oh, those are pretty. Let me put some of that in up, up higher on my horizon line. This is helping kind of bring that colors from the sky down in here too, giving it a little bit more unity. Not too much. You don't want to go too heavy on any one color. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go over my cloud area with some of the violet with white or my I'm sorry my shadow area and just put a few dabs of the violet color in my shadow area violet and white that'll kind of bring that back into make it kind of blend a little bit better um, I might even add a little tiny bit of it in my tree in my shadow parts. I don't know. Uh, let's see. We're getting pretty close here, I think. I um, feel like I might add a little bit more of that green gold color back in in a few spots. Grabbing some of that and just kind of working it in. Grab some of the unbleached titanium. I've still got some other colors in my brush, so it's making a kind of a softer brown. And I'm going to add just, I've kind of got my brush in angle. I'm just letting it drag the color off of, oh, I didn't want to do that. My blue was not dry yet. If you make a mistake, you can grab it off, dab it off with a little bit of, A damp cloth. Just make sure your paint underneath is dry. You just need to stay away from those trees. 
Probably should have done this before I did my trees, but didn't think of it. Just lightly dry brushing a few little highlights in my distance that'll really pop those back. Bring a little bit of it forward. Honestly, we're about done. Um, yeah, I like it. What do you think? Any, need anything? Maybe make that cloud a little bit brighter. Grab a little bit of the white with the pink. Finger to rub it out a little bit. Yeah, it's better. A little bit brighter. This is just a matter of kind of your taste now. You could make some of the little small wispy clouds at the very bottom of the horizon, very small thin ones, just by kind of doing some diagonal dabs. I think we're good. I don't want to mess with it too much. I really like it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I think I think we're going to call it good. We, we um, had one question at the beginning from okay. Rachel asking, do you have any tips on dealing with uh, artist block? artist yeah. block okay. like when you get kind of stuck and um well yeah i mean i if i'm kind of out of ideas or you know just don't feel like um you know very inspired um there's a couple of things that i've done in the past so one is just to kind of get on pinterest and sort of look and see if there's any fresh ideas on there um you can get on um go to the art store and sort of see if there's any new products or maybe pick out um, a new brush or a new, I don't know, learn something new maybe. Get on YouTube and um, search and see if there's any um, any kind of, like, like I went through a period um, not too long ago um, in my fine art where I was just kind of tired of what I'd been doing and looking for some inspiration. And so I got on YouTube and saw some mixed media um, paintings and um, I started doing mixing in the mixed media with my fine art and started doing like backgrounds that had um, collage and things like that and then doing my regular butterflies and things over the top of it and that really kind of uh, energized me so um, kind of learning something new um, you know getting out there and looking on, on YouTube and Pinterest and other things for inspiration and get in your art store and just maybe buy a couple of new things um, that kind of get your uh, get your creativity flowing again. Um, those are my top three things I would suggest. So hopefully that helps. I um, hope you've enjoyed this project. I really have enjoyed doing it. Um, and if you'd like to see some more like this, get, leave a comment. Um, be sure to check out my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. I've got lots of great uh, projects for beginners. Um, up in the I cards, there's a little I. You can click on that. Um, and it'll show you my playlist for beginners and for um, regular paintings. I've got a playlist for trees um, and that kind of thing. So um, thank you all so much that have watched today. I really appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you next Saturday here at 2 p.m. Central.